So, hi. I'm going to talk to you about um, nothing that's totally Android related, but it's very important nonetheless because it's about hackathons. Um, and in my eyes, they are pretty important. And some people I've been talking to agree with me. And so I've been invited here, which is a great honor, to Turkey. And I've been giving this talk in Istanbul, uh, in Istanbul yesterday in front of a smaller crowd. And I'm pretty nervous because many people are here, but I hope that I can um, give you some information, some details about hackathons. So first of all, there's just four points that I'm going to talk about. First of all, what is a hackathon? And after that, I'm going to uh, tell you why I really like them and what, can, what opportunities they give you when you participate in a hackathon or organize a hackathon. And then I'll show you how the hackathon usually, usually goes down. And after that, I'll give you some tools how to make your own hackathon and what you should keep in mind when creating your own hackathon. So, before that, just a few words about me. I'm organizing the Android in Berlin user group with monthly meetups, about 50 members that attend, but about 200 members that are subscribed to the mailing list. I organized some hackathons and events last year and will be doing the uh, Google I.O. Extended in Berlin this year together with a great team. Um, oh, sorry, I, I was told I should mention my boss. Um, who is Neophony Mobile. It's a great company to work at in Berlin. And um, I really like that they gave me this day off to be here and to talk to you here today. So let's get to the content. First of all, who of you knows what a hackathon is? Okay, who has attended a hackathon? Okay. And who organized the hackathon of those? Okay, I hope that there will be um, soon more hands going up, at least about knowing what a hackathon is and hopefully attending a hackathon soon because um, a hackathon is, the word itself is a portmanteau of the word hack and marathon. So it's got, on the one hand, the hacking, and on the other, other hand, the athletic approach of marathon. So you try to reach a goal. It doesn't have to be 42 miles running. Usually it is something that you say yourself what you want to do. For example, it can be um, I want to have my application in a beta phase, or I want to have this cool new feature implemented, or maybe you want to create a new idea during the hackathon and start working on that. So it's totally up to you. Also, uh, on the other hand, it's depending on the, on the competition that is there at the hackathon and on the goals that are set. So there might be some, some um, things you might keep in mind when you are at a hackathon. So there are internal hackathons at huge companies, for example. So, of course, Google, Facebook, Yahoo, LinkedIn, they all do hackathons. Smaller companies, like the company I work for, we do hackathons regularly as well, where we, for example, did testing, which was, um, I, I did a promotion test there, which was really interesting. And after that, I was able to continue working on that for the next couple of months. Now we've got a huge test suite. I got paid for that and it was lots of fun working with that. But this is internal hackathons. But if you do a hackathon, um, if you participate in a hackathon on, in your spare time, then it's usually something you really want to do for learning new stuff or for being, um, for, for teaching new stuff, uh, teaching stuff to people that are new to, to their uh, this special field. So, on the other hand, and it's not just this word, it revolves about something. I already mentioned it, but it revolves usually about around the models. For example, this can be Android, or it could be Arduino and the ADK, it could be some programming languages, or um, could be something, could have something to do with particular APIs, for example, the NFC APIs, which are really awesome to work with. They had, there were some bugs in the documentation when we started this two years, well, one, one, one and a half year? No, one, one year ago, last Worldcom, we played with it, and um, there were some bugs in the documentation, which we came to work around, provided some feedback to Google, they implemented it, which is really awesome, because they, they fixed the documentation bugs, which is, I really like. And, um, on the other hand, there's not just uh, the technologies that a uh, hackathon might revolve around, but also, for example, uh, the random hacks of kindness, which are held regularly at different locations all over the world. 
they deal with a special model. For example, they have a disaster control. So if there happens something really bad, what do you do? So how do you cope with that? And how can you use technology to make the pain that happens uh, to ease the pain? For example, the, the earthquake uh, in Italy that just happened recently, um, you could easily be able to, to reduce um, the people that were are missing. Okay, it's not that bad actually there, just luckily. But um, for example, Rita Maya did, I don't know if it happened at the random hacks of kindness, but he did the earthquake monitor. So you can see what earth, earthquakes are going on and can be notified if there are earthquakes near you, which is pretty good. Um, but it doesn't have to be such a drastic thing. It can be, for example, open data as well. So trying to make data from the government more open and making it access accessible to the public. So there are many, many different things that a hackathon can revolve around. Excuse me. And also, um, one thing that I've been asked to do um, was a hackathon for beginners. So people that are in the university came up to me in Berlin and asked me, um, can you provide us with some speakers and some people that want to learn Android with us? Which is really great because they're enthusiastic and they want to do that. And it can also be not just beginners, it can be any kind of demographic group that you want to have more in your developing community. So there's a lot of revolution going on in there. It's also about creation. So creating new awesome stuff, awesome stuff that you want to do and do it also in your spare time. So you have to have the enthusiasm to do that and not try to be um, abused by some company that wants you to do stuff for free. Never do that at a hackathon. This is the worst kind of hackathon that might actually happen. I read that about that in Hacker News yesterday, so I wanted to mention that. Um, just do at a hackathon what you want to do and not what somebody else wants you to do. And it's about evolution, about the evolution of the stuff that you do, about your evolution in your knowledge and your um, technological knowledge, and about teaching other people and help them to evolve. Also evolving your applications, making them better, and making them more solid and robust. So, after that, what, what's so great about it? What's so great about the hackathons? It's one on one, every hackathon is different. So you've got hackathons that are sponsored, where you have some companies giving money into it, usually like similar to a conference. Um, but usually those companies don't want you to, to work with their stuff. But if you do that, if you work with their APIs or use their technologies, they might give out some, some presents. So if you win a competition in, that, in their special area, you might get, get something. If, it, if it's interesting to you, do it. If not, don't, because it's your time. You should know what you want to do during your spare time. And spare time is, especially as a developer who's enthusiastic, pretty, pretty rare. So we've got, on the one hand, we've got friends, we've got uh, family probably, we've got some other social stuff we want to do, and also we want to relax. So if you, we sit down on the weekends and want to do something, and we should do it because we love it. And also, it's very um, unique, and every, every hackathon is different because of all the people that are here. If there are, for example, people that are mainly um, beginners, then it's a way different than if there are high professionals that work in their field for a couple of years. But it's important to have also a, mix a mixture of those people. So, have people that are new, people that are people that are new technology, people that are really used to that, because then you have um, the evolution part. Again. Also, um, you have usually a very inspiring work atmosphere. Due to the mixture of people that is usually at a hackathon, you have uh, lots of people that are, uh, you, you've got the, the possibility to ask people about stuff that you don't know, and on the other end, you have the possibility to, to, uh, to tell people something new. Also, you can continue your side project, you can upgrade it to the latest version of Android, you can upgrade your UI for just for examples. And one thing that makes it really, really inspiring in my eyes is that there are usually no bosses and no customers. So it's just about the stuff you really want to do and have, that, have the time to do that once in a while. Talking about the um, technologies, 
I think I can skip that. I covered that already. Um, also, it gets the community together. So when it is a hackathon, when we do a hackathon in Berlin, usually about 60 to 80 percent of the people attending are, have been to user group meetings before, and so they almost they know, they know each other, but they get to know each other even better, and they know what their own special uh, special uh, things are. They probably might give a talk at the next um, next big event. They probably the other 20 percent, on the other hand, they. Um, most of them stick with the user groups and continue to be there and continue to, um, to contribute to the user groups and continue to contribute to your knowledge, which is a great thing as long as you know how to use it. And um, last but not least, you also can might uh, be able to get to know your future colleagues or your future um, your future founders, uh, co-founders of your, your startup or application as you, you know, this is stuff that you can be there. That said, the rabbit hole goes pretty deep, so there's lots of more stuff that you can really see there, have there. Also, you can have, um, as many hackathons as you want, you usually find one thing and that's, there's Pretty the, the, even though there might be hackathons over uh, the, the period of a whole week, the time is get it is a critical point, and there is never enough time to work at a hackathon. We've had one hackathon over 48 consecutive hours in, in at the Global Android Dev Camp. I'm not quite sure if it was in Istanbul or Ankara. It was one too, and in Berlin we had 50, 55, 60 um, people showing up. And one of those guys worked for 36 consecutive hours, but just because he loved it and he created an awesome, awesome application where he used the Google TV to display data that was sent from mobile phones, and um, you could show it on the screen. It could, uh, this could be uh, websites, could be photos, could be videos, could be um, links in other Android applications, could be everything that could be shared on Android and you could upload that. So if somebody submits something and 500 other people see, oh, there's, that has been submitted and I'm interested to see it, then they can upload it. So this is really cool for having a, um, a second uh, display to see maybe um, this hashtag is very important at the moment. We want to see that. And oh, no, I want to see photos and we can upload the photos. So this has been created during 36 hours by not just this one guy, but he did most of the work. And after that, he said, I have to sleep, and I'm sorry, but um, this, we have to do this again, but next time we have to do it for two weeks, which is just one part where you can go down the rabbit hole. It's, as I said, it's pretty deep. So, I hope you know what excites me about hackathons, and um, now I want to show you a bit about how hackathons usually work. It's really easy. Um, you get together. Usually, you start a hackathon on a Friday or on a weekend, on a time where, uh, at a point of time where people have lots of time. You get together. You have something to eat. Best is no beers because starting with beers uh, might result maybe in a Walmart peak. So something like Windows and E might turn out, but um, usually nothing good. And you have something to eat, and then you, during that time, you try to find people you work with, you want to work with. And those people um, come to you and talk to you, you talk to them, and in the best case, you also have some, some presentation in the, in the beginning of the hackathon where everybody that has a project says, Yes, I want to do this project, and I want to have people that are interested in working with this, 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 and this technologies, or that might want to learn about another technology that I'm common with by doing this and that, which does not have to be long, but a couple of minutes of um, announcing what you want to do, and then um, usually you're set up with a good team that you can work with. You can also do that prior to the, um, to the hackathon, by advertising it prior to that, but I'll come to that later. And then after you, you've got your teams, you define what you actually want to achieve, or you announce it as well, and then you begin your hackathon. And 
how it goes down. It's really easy. You can hack it. Just as long as there's time left, you hack. If you're hungry, eat something, and if you're thirsty, drink something. And after that, you finish, and then you present what you did. And presenting what you did is usually pretty easy as long as you're still able to speak after, for example, 36 hours. This guy was not able to speak clearly, but he presented it and everybody was stunned by what he, done, what he did, which is enough. But it's good to maybe be able to step up and say a few words. It makes the chances higher to uh, win a prize if there are some. But he won anyway, so um, can be enough as well. Um, talking about the winning of something, um, you announce the winners. Usually, you do that immediately. So at the end of the hackathon, their projects are presented, and there's either a jury or a public vote. For example, people that clap, and the loudest, the loudest clap gets um, the winner. And after that, you continue to bring it down until no more prizes are left. Um, there are also things like if it's not immediately, that's why it's got this uh, asterisk behind it. Um, you usually have it at, a, at an upcoming conference or next user group meeting where you, on the one hand, announce the winners. If, the, for example, the sponsors want to decide for themselves or look through the code themselves, then this might happen as well. That would be the best thing is to do that immediately. After that, usually some drinks, some beers, talking to people. And um, when you do it at a, at a hackerspace, people don't have to go home immediately. So this might be a good thing to keep in mind that you, on the one hand, have a bar where you could go out to afterwards or stay at the same venue. Starting with the organizer's view, um, as I did before, I want to give you some insights of how to organize a hackathon in a more or less good way. I mentioned the timing earlier. 
um, you want to have weekends or longer periods of time. There are conferences in Berlin that are scheduled uh, in the time between uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve because most people don't have to work during that time in Germany. And this conference is uh, usually pretty crowded and they are looking for a bigger venue at the moment and it's really great to be there and they take up this block so this block is already taken by them which is a pity because it would be great for separate hackathons as well but having a prolonged weekend like um, some, some holiday for a weekend and then going all over the weekend is a great thing as well and 8 hours to, to work or just 8 hours is really little time so try to have it at least 10 to 12 hours or give the people at least this time to work on their projects. After that, you know about the timing, you have to try to get some money. And getting money from the people that attend the conference is usually, um, it's, it's okay, but trying to keep it free for, for the attendees is a good idea. Because um, people really like free stuff, free stuff, but some people on the other hand think that totally free is not worth anything. But this, I'll cover this later again. Um, so but everything needs to be paid, so you should try to get sponsors. And finding sponsors might be easy on the one hand, but difficult on the other hand. But before, before you, you know who you want to pay for your hackathon, you should find a reasonable amount of money that you want to have, which would be the rent for the location, plus the prices you want to offer, plus a buffer, plus the foods and drinks, and um, multiply the foods and drinks with the amount of participants. And that is the required amount of money that you need for your hackathon. Together with a buffer, you know about, if you say, let's, let's just take 5,000 euros, you know you need sponsors for 5,000 euros. After that, you can go on, on, the world, on the way to try to find some sponsors. And finding sponsors is like picking a 4 leaf clover. It's not easy, but if you have good sponsors, it's really the best thing that can ever happen. We've had sponsors at hackathons that said, yeah, we like hackathons. And we, the, the organizers thought, yeah, okay, cool. That's great. Um, it's great that you give us money. You can send people to us, which is awesome. But please don't send um, marketing people because this is not about marketing. This is not about promoting a company. This is about people creating stuff, in this case, for Android. And that, so they said, yeah, it's no problem. And they sent a good team of people that really did a great job there at the, at the hackathon. And they created an OCR reader, so on screen uh, reader, which was uh, nice to look at. It's, I forgot the name at the moment. Um, but other than just saying no marketing people, you should have something like a fact sheet for um, your sponsors. Like saying, okay, we've got three, four, or five different packages. Saying community package, uh, bronze package, silver package, gold package, uh, platinum package, and all those packages cost a different amount of money, but on the other hand, have their different, um, their different ways of getting things back, for example, getting mentioned on blogs, getting mentioned uh, at the website, maybe putting out some flyers, sending a different amount of people. Those are things that you should put on this fact sheet before you, uh, with, with which you can go and uh, search some sponsors. And try to find sponsors from your local area, which is pretty good because they might even uh, be cool guys that they send there and you might be interested in, in getting a job there. Also, for Android hackathons, it has proven a good thing to try to find um, hardware vendors, which is a great thing, because um, maybe having hardware to give out and the end of hackathon is just pure awesome for everybody that attends. And also, um, startups that have Android applications might uh, be willing and able to sponsor and use the time by themselves, like the startup that created the on-screen reader. So, after you've got your money, you want to have people that participate. I think you might have been there. Um, this is, I think, an Android developer lab in uh, Japan. Um, but um, coming back to participants, um, you might want to clarify how many participants your location can hold. And then you have to find a, a reasonable no-show rate. I've been talking to guys here in uh, Turkey and 
they said we've got a no-show rate for uh, up to about 50 percent which is really really crazy in my eyes um, in germany we try to keep it at about 10 to 25 percent and 25 percent is really high and 10 percent we can lower the limit to 10 percent if we want if we ask the attendees to pay some money when they register but it's not about asking them for everything but for about like five euros so that they can pay for one pizza that we order. And so we have one pizza covered, which is cool. And on the other hand, we know that the people that want to come there really, uh, the residents that really want to show up. And so we can lower that to about 10%. And you need to get your participants registered as well. So registering um, your participants is an easy thing. You can use stuff, free stuff like uh, Google Docs, which we usually do with the forum. And or you can use Amiando Doodle. Doodle is not that good in my eyes for having a hackathon with all the information that we usually take. On the other hand, you can use paid stuff if you may find them as sponsors or otherwise pay them. It's Meetup or Eventbrite, they are pretty good as well for um, organizing meetings and having con contact with the people that registered. And you want to take, of course, the name of the attendee and the email. And if you don't want to have money from the participants, but other ways of lowering the no-show rate, then you can easily use something like, what projects have you done already? Or uh, questions like, what's the motivation for you to come to the hackathon? What do you want to do there? Or are there projects that you want to submit? <coughs> Those are things that lower the, the no-show rate even more. So after your participants have registered, you want to provide for them probably food. And why should pizza eat this? Uh, because pizza is the best food for a hackathon. It's not invasive. So you can order pizza. If, if you have a hackathon that is 24 hours or 48 hours, then you can order pizza twice a day and you just put it there. And whenever somebody's hungry, they come there, take their pizza, get back to work. And nobody comes there and says, dude, you want to grab something to eat later? And it's disturbing you and you can't continue because you just had a thought and you missed it. So pizza is perfect for that. On the other hand, when you uh, also offer drinks, try to um, make that available to every team, something that they have their own, uh, like a case of, of Coke or Coca-Cola or um, some water that they can work with that. Also having something with caffeine in it is really, really good. I think I don't have to explain why. And last thing that you should consider while um, organizing it is swag. Stuff that you can take home. Stuff you take home is really important, especially t-shirts are really a great deal because people wear it at work and they talk about your event and at the next event there might be on the one hand either more people showing up or on the other hand, people coming back again with great memories. And this keeps it in mind easily. After you've got organized all that, there's got one thing left that you really need to do, and that's taking it to the streets. So talking about it, talking about that there is a hackathon going on. Talk to people that you know are multi multiplicators in your social networks, but not just online. Talk offline, talk to the local g talks talk to the other people that you know, talk to um, Use, but on the other hand, use online as well, of course. Use your blogs, website, create a own blog for your hackathon. If you want to, hackathon, the blogs are cheap. Blogs are just create one, have a few posts. It's important that the people that want to be there, they read it. And in the end, make the aftermath and write about what the results were, who won, and everybody will remember it as a great thing, like the Global Android Death Camp, which was in my eyes a huge success and we will do that again sometime soon. Thank you very much. Anyone has questions now? Okay, I'll be around and you can... Oh, yeah? Yes. Uh, I know that uh, in Istanbul, uh, we have a safe space. 
Yes. At the hackathon, we had uh, 55 people. So at the space, um, there are 350, no, oh, that's, that's a lie. Last number was 420 registered. And usually there are about up to 100 people showing up regularly. So it's huge. But it's one of the older, oldest hacker spaces. Um, um, I hope and I really think that Istanbul can come in this direction because Istanbul is way larger than Berlin. Uh, I'd really love to see, I, I tried to, to visit the Istanbul hackerspace, but uh, unfortunately they said we, on Friday it's too late, on Saturday they had presentations or some, some uh, meetings, and on Sunday I had to leave pretty soon. But next time I'll be here uh, in Istanbul, I will definitely come over. So I'll be around. Uh, if you have further questions, just come to me and ask me. Thanks.